the second wife. Inside the hut, Mandisa sat on a mat, her face a mask of surprise and anger. She had been going about her evening chores when the news had struck her like a lightning bolt. Her husband, Lengo, had arrived with a new wife in tow. Mandisa had been completely blindsided by this revelation. It was customary for men in their culture to take multiple wives, but Lengo had assured her that he would never take a second wife. Clearly, those words had been nothing but a cruel mirage. Inside the hut, tension hung in the air like a storm cloud about to burst. Elders, their faces etched with wisdom, huddled around Mandisa, their voices low and soothing as they tried to calm the older wife's tumultuous emotions. Patience, Mandisa, one of the elders whispered. Change is part of life, and our traditions allow for this. But Mandisa's heart ached with a mixture of betrayal and anger. She could not accept this second wife, this intruder into her sacred space. The thought of sharing Lengo with another woman was an affront to her pride and her dignity. Meanwhile, outside the hut, Malaika sat on the hard ground, her heart heavy with a burden she had not anticipated. Tears welled up in her eyes, threatening to spill over. She had been told by Lengo that he had fallen out of love with Mandisa, that she would be the one to bring happiness and love back into his life. But now, as she watched the drama unfold inside the hut, she realized that she had been lied to. She wanted to burst out crying, to stand up and leave this place, but she couldn't. Her hand rested protectively on her swelling belly, a silent reminder of the life growing inside her. She knew that for the sake of her unborn child, she had to stay and weather this storm, no matter how painful it might be. Lengo, caught in the middle of the chaos, tried to calm his wife Mandisa down. His voice was a soothing balm, but his words fell on deaf ears. In that dimly lit hut, with elders counseling Mandisa and Lengo torn between two worlds, the stage was set for a dramatic and heart-wrenching journey. Chapter 2, A Secret Affair It was beneath the star-studded African sky, near the serene river that whispered ancient secrets, where Lengo and Malaika had often met in the quiet of the night. The moon, their only witness, bathed their stolen moments in silvery light. Lengo's eyes were locked onto Malaika's, a fervent intensity in his gaze. Malaika, he whispered, his voice trembling with emotion, I have a feeling deep within my heart, a conviction that cannot be denied. Malaika's heart quickened, and she leaned in closer, her eyes searching his. What do you mean, Lengo? He gently placed his hand on her belly, where the swelling belly hinted at the life growing within her. I believe, he said, his voice barely more than a breath, that you carry a baby boy, a son who will bring us the happiness we've longed for. A soft smile curved on Malaika's lips, her hand covering Lengo's. A son, she whispered, the word carrying the weight of their dreams. And with him, Malaika, our future together is assured. Mandisa and I, our marriage. It's nothing more than a facade, masking an existence neither of us truly desires. Malaika's eyes shone with a mixture of hope and love. Lengo, I've dreamed of a life with you, a life where we can be together openly, without fear. Lengo squeezed her hand gently. That life will soon be our reality. I promise you, Mandisa will no longer stand between us. I will find a way to make it right, for you and for our son. Malaika's heart swelled with gratitude and devotion. He leaned in, their lips meeting in a tender kiss that sealed their unspoken vows. Meanwhile, Mandisa, had been devoted to Lengo in a way that he had never truly appreciated. Mandisa had borne him three beautiful daughters, each one a testament to their love. But for Lengo, the absence of a son had been a source of unspoken disappointment. He had hoped for a male heir, someone to carry on his name and inherit his legacy. Each time Mandisa had given birth to a girl, he had hidden his disappointment behind a facade of forced smiles and comforting words. Mandisa, oblivious to her husband's inner turmoil, had remained loyal and dedicated to Lengo. She had tirelessly cared for their home, tended to their daughters, and offered unwavering support through every challenge they had faced. Her love for him had never wavered, and she had continued to believe in their marriage, even as it crumbled under the weight of Lengo's secret desires. Chapter 3, The Birth The African night was alive with the sounds of the forest as Malaika groaned in pain, her body racked with the agony of childbirth. She lay on a bed inside the dimly lit hut, beads of sweat glistening on her forehead, while the rhythmic chants of the midwives filled the air. Outside, Lengo paced the compound impatiently, his heart racing with anticipation. He couldn't stand the tension any longer. The weight of his hope rested on the news he was desperately waiting to hear that his son had been born. 
Mandisa. The first wife was in the kitchen, pretending to cook but feigning ignorance about the palpable tension in the compound. After the incident of bringing a new wife into the family, Mandisa had reluctantly accepted Malika's presence, for she had no choice. The few months they had coexisted had been painful for Mandisa. They treated her as a second-class citizen in her own home, with little regard for her feelings. They giggled, chased each other in the compound like children, and made Mandisa feel like an outsider in her own family. She had become accustomed to the humiliation. If she had somewhere else to go, she would have left, but alas, she had nowhere and no one. Lengo was her life, her only anchor in this world. Inside the hut, the labor continued for hours. The midwives moved with a sense of urgency, running throughout the compound to fetch water and fresh cloths as needed. Malika's cries of pain filled the night, and the tension in the air was nearly suffocating. And then, at last, the piercing cry of an infant reverberated throughout the compound. It was a cry filled with life and promise, a cry that brought both hope and trepidation. Lengo couldn't wait any longer. He burst into the hut, his eyes wide with anticipation and his heart pounding in his chest. He had to know, had to see his son for the first time. Inside the dimly lit hut, he was met with the sight of a tearful Malaika, her face etched with exhaustion and despair. I am sorry, she cried, her voice trembling. I have failed you. Lengo's face contorted with shock and anger. He couldn't believe his eyes. He felt betrayed, as if the world had crumbled beneath his feet. You are a witch, he shouted, his voice filled with rage. You betrayed me. I want you gone. Malika fell to her knees, her tears mixing with the sweat on her face as she begged for forgiveness. She tried to explain, to make him understand, but Lengo's fury was unrelenting. He turned and stormed out of the hut, leaving behind a heartbroken Malika, a newborn daughter, and a shattered dream of a future together. Chapter 4, The Aftermath The months that followed were indeed heartbreaking. Lengo remained obstinate, refusing to visit his new daughter and showing no efforts to reconcile with Mandisa. Malika was allocated a piece of land within the compound to build her hut. The village, empathizing with her plight, rallied to help her construct her new home. Mandisa's heart ached witnessing the hardships Malika endured. As time passed, she would gently knock at Malika's door with a plate of food in hand, offering sustenance and a touch of kindness. Sometimes, she would take little Ada for a walk, allowing Malika some much-needed rest. These small acts of compassion bridged the gap between the two women. Before long, their interactions grew from mere acts of sympathy to a genuine friendship. The sound of their laughter became a common occurrence in the compound, and Lengo felt increasingly isolated as he watched the bond between Mandisa and Malika deepen into a sisterly connection. One day, as they sat together on the porch, sharing stories and sipping tea, their eyes were drawn to a girl sitting within the compound, her head hung low in the presence of a few village elders. The girl's despondent appearance revealed a life marked by hardship and disappointment. Malika and Mandisa exchanged knowing glances, the third wife had arrived. Without a word, they rose from their seats and approached the girl. Come inside, Malika said gently, her voice infused with warmth and empathy. You must be hungry. Mandisa nodded, a compassionate smile on her face. Yes, dear. Join us. There's enough food for everyone. The girl's eyes filled with surprise and gratitude as she followed them into Malika's hut. There, they shared a meal and stories of their own challenges and triumphs. Within the nurturing embrace of their newfound friendship, the three women found solace and strength. The laughter that rang through the compound was no longer marred by bitterness, but was instead a testament to the healing power of unity in adversity. While Lengo remained an outsider in his own home, the sisterhood grew stronger with each passing day. Thank you for watching our story, The Second Wife, and we hope you enjoyed it. What lessons did you draw from this story? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and be part of the tribe. Thank you for watching The Tales of the Savannah. We will see you next time in the Savannah.